Hi girls, it's Saturday, not Friday, and I have a lot of websites to show you. So the puppies are playing in the background. Uh, if you can hear them, I'm sorry, hopefully you can. Like I said in the intro, I have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of websites to show you guys. Way more than I did last year, way more than I thought I would be talking about today. And I'm really happy about that fact because most of these started this year, they're recent websites. And uh, yeah, let's get started. I don't use all the websites that I'm going to list today. I'm just trying to be all touristic and trying to help anyone who is watching this video. These are just um, places on the web that I've seen other people say works great for them. Sometimes it doesn't work great for you, sometimes it does. Hopefully someone will find something that works for them and that's really my goal for this video. The first one I wanted to talk to you guys about is Pinterest. You guys know what Pinterest is. If you don't, it's like a corkboard type uh, interface where people can post different stuff, different articles. I use it for posting um, pictures and stuff that I want to remember for when I write a certain story. I'm going to show you my insouciance pin board, whatever Pinterest calls it, and it's basically just stuff that I have pinned over the course of um, thinking about this story. I've pinned what the character looks like, what other characters have looked like, pictures of the setting where she works, and a lot of other miscellaneous stuff that I thought would help me write the book. My local ML also does this for her book and it's really cool when you're friends with other writers when they do this because you can see their process of how they're adding these images. So going from one big site to the other site, the other big site I wanted to tell you about is Tumblr. Tara talked about this on Tuesday. Tara talked about Tumblr on Tuesday. Tara talked about Tumblr on Tuesday alliteration and I can't emphasize it enough that's how that's literally how great of a, a resource this can be for a writer I chose yeah right because they actually link to a lot of other writing websites a lot of the time and they post really great stuff a lot of these tumblers you can submit questions to and they'll answer they reblog a lot of great stuff so the next website I want to tell you guys about is carahub.com and it is a what sounds like kind of character hub. It's basically a place where you can catalog your characters all in one place. You can upload them, sort them however you like, and once you do, you can put in all their information, pictures to go along with it, and then they have questions that you can fill out and just kind of have a place to remember where it all is on the web. So that's pretty cool. Going into websites that help you focus and kind of stuff to listen to, um, Tara brought up the great, amazing website, Coffee-tivity, 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 Coffee-tivity. One of the sites I have actually used, and it's great, and I love it. Um, this is another one that Amanda actually found for me, and it's kind of the same concept. The website is called Sound Your Own, and what you do is there are multiple sounds that you can listen to at once, which is why I really like it, um, and you can create really interesting uh, sounds this way. They have one called waves and then one called fire. If you listen them together, it's kind of like you're, you're at a bonfire at the beach. So then the other uh, focusing website that you can listen to is focusatwill.com and they have a unregistered version, a free registered version, and then a upgraded pro version. Um, but even the unregistered free version is great. What it does is the website has remastered and mixed all these different songs that you're supposed to listen to at a low volume. And just like Coffinity and Sound Drown, it's supposed to help you focus because it makes your subconscious listen to it so that you aren't distracted by other sounds. That sounds like a mouthful, but it's great. I personally like the up-tempo um, playlist that they have. There's a website called Simply Noise, where it has three different types of noise, white, pink, and brown. And depending, it explains which, which does what, and they all sound different. What you're trying to do, it'll recommend one for you, one specific type. And it also has an oscillating feature where it gets louder and then it gets softer and then it gets louder and then it gets softer and that's also a really nice tool to refocus and then focus refocus focus and just to keep your subconscious not so distracted all the time 
And then I've also used its sister site, Simply Rain. Basically does the same thing. You can have it be thundering. It can thunder a lot or it can thunder almost never or you can turn the thunder off. And it also has oscillation feature. And then I found a website from the NaNoWriMo forums called Do It Yourself MFA and there's this writer igniter and it's basically just a random generator of prompts and it gives you a character, situation, prop, and setting. Particularly like their situations. I think that's actually the most interesting part about the website. Something that people don't usually think about when they're writing and one of the things that they uh, get caught up researching and when you research during NaNoWriMo, you tend to write less, and everyone knows how I feel about that. So I really don't want people to spend time researching if it's going to compromise their word count at the end of the day. One of the things they'll research is really specific, odd questions about food, like what did they eat in 14th century Spain? This website called foodtimeline.org breaks everything down by its history. Look up the recipe for squirrel stew. And uh, it's really, really interesting stuff. And you can see what, who ate what, when, where. You command F or control F on your keyboard, depending on what kind of computer you're using. You just look for anything and they'll have it. Um, and they break it down by year and when, you know, when did Orange Julius first serve, first start serving and, you know, when did the first eggnog start and what were the recipes handy to have if especially if you're doing like a historical fiction going back to another website that Tara talked about rainymood.com I used this so 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 much last year I cannot tell you cannot emphasize this enough all I did was I put Scrivener I went to full screen compose mode and I put rainymood.com on full on full screen so that when I wrote, I saw the um, animation in the background for the website. You know how if you've been to the website, um, you can see actual raindrops like falling down a window pane. It's so relaxing and focused and white noise and it's amazing. I will always recommend Rainy Mood for everything. But for those of us who need a little bit more help with scenes and atmosphere and that sort of thing, I cannot recommend Songs on enough. What a lot of people will use Songs on for now is internet radio, like Pandora and Songs and um, Spotify and iTunes radio and stuff like that. But um, Songs though was one of the first websites to start this matrix of where you can tell it what time of day it is or what you're doing and it'll create playlists based on that. So what I mean by that is uh, if you go on the website and go to Browse All, they have a lot of different ways to browse. And one of the more useful ways is to um, go to their Moods tab and click on whatever type of mood your scene that you're working on at the moment has. They have everything. <laughs> it, they like really specific stuff. And to have emotional music in your scene, you can do playlists that center around doing a specific activity. So if you're having like a beach party or pool party, they have playlists for that. In addition to all of that, that song that it does, which is a lot, um, I also recommend checking out in their genre section, their nature sounds. They have like the usual nature sounds. They have like rainforest and tropical ocean, um, but then they also have thunderstorm sounds and cackling fire. They have a cackling fire playlist, you guys. I cannot tell you how relaxing it is listening to fire cackle. You wouldn't think, but it is. Um, so yeah, definitely check songs out, explore, see what you like about it. Um, they have a free mobile app too. Um, I can't say, I can't emphasize that website enough. Um, so thanks to Tara. Once again, thank you. I checked out Grammarly.com. I've never heard of that website before, and it's great. I love it. They also have is Words by Grammarly. So I checked that out, and it's also really cool. So you put in, like, they give you a search bar, and you put in any word, and they find the best words for the context of your writing um, based on what you put in. So you put in a word, and it'll give you synonyms, meaning, definitions. It'll also give you a word score which sort the cinnamon, synonyms according to word usage. Um, a lot of people talking about baby name websites. I don't like 
traditional baby name websites because they really cater to expecting parents and they really just talk about like names to name your kid if they're going to be born this year and for a lot of us we're not writing about infants and everyone knows how much the name how important the name is to a character for me i really emphasize because i do a lot of contemporary i emphasize on when they were born if not the decade then like within like a year or two where when they were born and they're never born in the year that I write about. What I actually like is the United States Social Security website. If you go down to items of interest and you go to baby names, they have a whole tab for it. They show you the top baby names for the previous year, but they also give you the option to search um, popular names by year. And they can give you anywhere from the top 20 to the top 1,000 um, names from 1879 when the census started and beyond, which is great. Again, if you don't want the most popular names, you just expand the search and it will give you a wider range of unique names that were used during that time period. Um, and it changes like every five years, you can see a change of names. That's why I don't like using the regular big name websites because they don't show, they usually don't show you by year. Um, they are, however, great for looking up um, ethnicities. You run into the same problem when you do ethnicity because what was popular for baby girls in Japan today was not necessarily popular 10 years ago in Japan for girls. So, yeah. So for word sprints, I cannot sprint without writeordie.com. Literally the best way to get words in that I found. They also have a app for your iPad, I believe it is, and your PC. But um, we're not talking about apps, we're talking about websites. And you can use it for free on the website. It's terrifying to use, but it's so good. It's, I, I, uh, cause I'm the worst. I will just sit there and just blank. I will blank. If you blank on write or die, it will start deleting words. And I don't know about you guys, but that helps me. <laughs> <laughs> that motivates me because I hate deleting anything. But if it's too stressful for you, and it is for some people, you should do written kitten. On written kitten, every time you write 100 words, a new kitten image appears right next to the box. Um, it's great positive reinforcement. <laughs> that doesn't work on me because I will just look at the kitten. I found a link to an article where they also linked to written puppy, written dog, written chihuahua, and written... Labrador. It tells you how to do how to search any term you want. I'm not sure how to do that exactly, but apparently it's possible. And to go back to Tumblr, I found a really specific, um, helpful Tumblr that I just wanted to mention real quick. It's called Writing Prompts. Pretty self-explanatory. It's a Tumblr that tumbles writing prompts. Um, you just go to the website and then click on their random link and it will randomly pop up a writing prompt. So there will be times when you are not writing, such as October and during November when you're doing other stuff other than NaNoWriMo, such as driving to work or school or whatever, or you just, you're just not able to write. If you're able to listen, you should check out writingexcuses.com. It is a podcast website. It's a podcast that these four writers do every week. There's a new one every week and um, you might know some of them. Brandon Sanderson is the um, one that I recognize most. He's a fantasy novelist. Every week they choose a different topic to talk about. It's free to download. You can download them off of the iTunes podcast or you can just listen to a specific one on their website. You can either go to their archives or you can scroll down until you go to their tags and they tag every single podcast. So if you say you wanted to see their NaNoWriMo um, pep talks, which they do every year, you just go to their NaNoWriMo tag and they will talk about it. And they did a great NaNoWriMo podcast about pantsing um, la the other, I think it was either last year or two years ago. I found them through my friend, my writer friend Kristen, and have basically, I some of them I like so much that I downloaded into my iTunes library so I can listen to anytime I want. So the next website is also kind of like an article type thing, but I will probably use it 
for the first time this year. It's called The Emotion Thesaurus from the Bookshelf Muse. Basically, The Emotion Thesaurus is an actual book that she published, but for her blog, she put up um, some sample entries. And there are a lot of entries. I'm sure there's a lot more in the book, but the ones that she put up are pretty useful. So like if you go to one, she will then um, give you entries that describe how a person acts. Then they also give you related emotions. I found it a couple weeks ago and one of the things I realized through workshops is that I don't um, I don't show as much as I should. I, I'm always telling. I really want to show that the person is, that the character is relieved. I want to show that they they feel um, happy or panicked or whatever. Um, and this is really great because it shows you how you can describe that. So the last three are pretty obvious. The first, the one of the last I'll talk about is a generator a site which is really helpful especially if you you game or you do Dungeons of Dragons but it's great for writers too because especially for like fantasy sci-fi it um, is a great generator it's called chaotic shiny and it's one of the new ones I found on the NaNoWriMo forums um, but they have a anything you would want to generate I ever need a generator for combat terrain I'll look it up Piggyback on that is the classic generator that's been up since I, <laughs> that's been on the web since I was in elementary school, I think, Seventh Sanctum. Um, it's a classic. In addition to being a great generator site, they also link to a bunch of other ones, and um, yeah, it's it's funny. It's a funny website. Okay, so the last obvious one I'm going to talk about, the last one overall, is of course the NaNoWriMo forums. Um, in specifically the reference desk. Recently I asked um, a question about murdering an FBI agent on in, in international waters. Very specific and I gave all the parameters for the situation. This criminal justice lawyer replied back and helped me through how it was going to happen, what happens to the character um, and how they're convicted and what it's like for the trial. All that great stuff. Really weird questions I ask and the people who are replying to them are other writers. So not only can they help you in the field of interest that you're looking for, they can also help you on a level where they understand what you're doing. They understand that you're trying to write a story around this specific thing. I don't think there's anything else. I talked a lot. This this video is going to be super long. I can already tell. I already have like over 45 minutes of talking just alone. So I hope everybody enjoyed this video and hopefully you found something great to bookmark. I'm really tired. <laughs> I'm going to go take a nap I think because I had midterms. So yes, let me end this video while I'm still conscious. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Julie, I will see your beautiful face on Monday. Bye you guys!